Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's head outside and take a look outside our weather window. Lots of sunshine late this afternoon. We had some clouds around noontime, but still pretty nice day around north central Washington. Today, as you see that snow at the bottom of your screen, marks 90 days that we have had snow on the ground here in the Wenatchee Valley. Our first snow that stuck back on November 8th. And as we take a look at our forecast moving ahead, it looks pretty good throughout the rest of this week and throughout the weekend. High temperatures generally in the low 40s with partly cloudy skies. Maybe a chance for rain on Monday and then back to seasonal temperatures on Tuesday with mostly sunny skies. We'll have your complete north central Washington weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. Gregory Lone hasn't been sentenced yet for bilking elderly clients out of a half a million dollars, but yesterday a judge ordered him to jail anyway. And President Joe Biden presented the State of the Union address last night in front of a joint session of Congress. We'll have more on that and reaction from Republican Dan Newhouse. But first, our top story tonight. Five people were injured in a two-vehicle crash this morning on Highway 2 just west of Leavenworth, closing the route at Tumwater Canyon and requiring at least one patient to be airlifted. Washington State Patrol Trooper Colin Kumaravel uh, said the accident occurred about 8.40 a.m. when an eastbound passenger vehicle lost control and slid sideways into the path of an oncoming westbound vehicle. The T-bone accident took place at milepost 99, just west of the city limits and the junction with Icicle Road. Kuma Ravel said it appeared the causing driver was traveling too fast for the snowy conditions at the mouth of the canyon. The injuries among some of the crash victims were described as severe. All were transported to Central Washington Hospital, one as we mentioned by airlift. Highway 2 at Tumwater remained closed until shortly after 11 a.m. Gregory Lone hasn't been sentenced yet for bilking elderly clients out of half a, a million dollars, but yesterday a judge ordered him to jail anyway. The 55-year-old investment manager pleaded guilty in Douglas County Court last month to five counts of first-degree theft for defrauding five Wenatchee Valley clients in a Ponzi scheme. He was due to be sentenced Tuesday to three years in prison, but Judge Brian Huber delayed imposing sentence while he considers case law on the issue. In the meantime, he ordered Lone confined in the Chelan County Jail. The victim of Lone's fraud filed impact statements saying he'd cost them their life savings. Lone's own family members said he'd defrauded them too. And in a letter to the court, his father advocated a sentence of seven to ten years. He'll appear before the judge again on February 21st. Well, President Joe Biden presented his State of the Union address last night in front of a joint session of Congress. Biden touted his accomplishments on infrastructure and prescription drug prices, but called for police reform, protections for abortion rights, voting rights, and more. I start tonight by congratulating the 118th Congress and the new Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. And two years ago, COVID had shut down, our businesses were closed, our schools were robbed of so much. And today, COVID no longer controls our lives. And two years ago, democracy faced its greatest threat to the Civil War. And today, though bruised, our democracy remains unbowed and unbroken. I think the people sent us a clear message. Fighting for the sake of fighting, power for the sake of power, conflict for the sake of conflict gets us nowhere. We're going to make sure the supply chain for America begins in America. The supply chain begins in America. Democratic U.S. Senator Maria Cantwell responded positively to the president's speech. He said, quote, Tonight, the president gave a strong speech about, a speech rather, about America's opportunities ahead. The bills we pass deliver historic investments in our infrastructure, manufacturing, science, and innovation, unquote. However, Republican Representative Dan Newhouse had a less favorable response. 
I thought it was good. He said a lot of good things about veterans, about law enforcement, uh, but it was supposed to be a unifying speech. And I didn't hear anything that was unifying for Americans. In fact, it was, if anything, it divided yeah. people more uh, and caused more partisan division, as you probably heard in some of the uh, some of the comments by some of the members during during the speech. Talk about how great the economy is and how many jobs have been created. Well, if you go down any main street of any town in, in Washington State or around the country and talk to people, you'll understand that people are not feeling confident about the economy. With the increase in prices in so many different things, and everything from housing, food, energy, all of the things that uh, Americans have to buy every single day, becoming harder and harder to purchase. When we come back, for the first time since February of 2020, the median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee market has gone down year over year. The results from the point in time count show a slight decrease in the number of people experiencing homelessness on the day of the event. The Wenatchee School Board is looking for stakeholders to participate in the search for the district's next superintendent. And the Chelan County PUD and Puget Sound Energy executed a 20-year contract for renewable hydropower yesterday. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. At Prestige Senior Living, we celebrate life at every age. From our cognitive and fall reduction programs to our focus on life enrichment and wellness, we help our residents maintain independence while nurturing mind, body, and spirit. Residents also enjoy a wide variety of amenities and services, including restaurant quality dining, housekeeping, a full calendar of events, and so much more. To learn more or to schedule a tour, visit us at PrestigeCare.com or call the number on your screen. We can't wait to show you around. Welcome back. In another news, for the first time since February of 2020, the median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee market has gone down year over year. That's the latest from Pacific Appraisal Associates, where they report the median sales price of a home in the Wenatchee Valley in January was $500,000. That's down 2% compared to January of 2022, where the price was at $510,500. Further indication that the housing market in our area continues to cool down. Total home sales in January were up slightly compared to 2022, while active listings were way up at 110 in January of this year, compared to only 65 in January of last year. The results from the point in time count show a slight decrease in the number of people experiencing homelessness on the day of the event. This year's count shows 105 unsheltered people in Chelan and Douglas counties, which is down from the 123 unsheltered people counted last year. The county defines unsheltered as living out of doors or in a vehicle or RV, an abandoned building or a tent or other outdoor area not meant for habitation. 
While results show a decrease in unsheltered individuals, they show 368 folks are living in shelters or temporary housing. That's a 91 person increase since 2022. Chelan County Housing Program Coordinator Sasha Sleeman noted that there may be people who could not be housed at the moment, but we have far more people in our community who can experience homelessness at any moment after the count is complete. The Wenatchee School Board is looking for stakeholders to participate in the search for the district's next superintendent. Students, staff, parents, and community members can apply to serve on a stakeholder interview committee and interview superintendent finalists. Interested applicants need to apply by noon next Tuesday, February 14th, and if they're selected, they'll be notified the next day by 5 p.m. To be considered, applicants must be able to attend all interviews on February 21st, 23rd, and 27th, which will run from 4.30 to 5.15 p.m. at Wenatchee High School. The application is available online at the Wenatchee School District website. In other news, the Chelan County PUD and Puget Sound Energy executed a 20-year contract for renewable hydropower yesterday. Puget Sound Energy will be provided with 25% of the output from the PUD's Rock Island and Rocky Reach hydropower projects. They contract, the contract rather increases Puget's carbon-free resources toward its future renewable goals and flexible capacity to help meet peak energy needs during high customer usage times. The contract was negotiated over 18 months and will run from 2031 to 2051. Puget Sound Energy's current contracts with the PUD expire in 2026 and again in 2031. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Getting ready for the boating season is easy with the help of Bob File Boats and Motors. Now's the time of year to upgrade your boat from a new motor, a bow mount, installing a state-of-the-art GPS fish finder, or just fixing your trailer lights make your appointment today. With marine technology changing fast, the service department stays up to date with the newest developments and factory certifications. Spend more time on the water and less time at the shore. Get ready for summer fun now at Bob File Boats and Motors. NCW Life Channel is your home for local sports with the Wenatchee Panthers at East Bont Wildcats right here. Coverage brought to you by Abbey's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Card Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mark, and Together for You. Follow all the action right here on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. The Royal Court for the 2023 Apple Blossom Festival will be selected this weekend at Numerica, Numerica Performing Arts Center. Tonight, it's the third of our series of interviews with the top 10 candidates. The presiding queen and royalty for the festival will be chosen at 7 p.m. on Saturday. In tonight's feature story, Eric Granstrom introduces us to two more royalty candidates, Alicia Bartlett and Taylor Williams. Um, so I'm a high school senior, as all the Apple Blossom women are. I go to Eastmont, and I love music, singing, and my dog, Bula. How did you decide to run for top 10? I wasn't really sure if I was gonna do it initially. I'd thought about it last year, seeing some of the people go through the process and I had Rita who was a top 10 she was in my first period forensics so I would kind of talk to her about the process and I was good friends with Ryan Salcedo and so when I saw her do her speech I was there watching and I just thought she did such a good job and I just was like I feel like that's something I could do and that it would be fun to even just like do the process and be able to have the opportunity to speak in front of a crowd so singing mm-hmm now I, you must be able to sing. How did you learn that you could sing, that you could like go and like do this in front of people? I think I started singing in 
probably just church on Sundays and then I realized that oh this is really fun and so then I did choir and uh, theater at a young age and past that I really fell in love with performing and so I started taking private voice lessons and I've been doing that for about six years now. I'm super involved in the community at school, I would say. I am a part of FFA, which is an agricultural club. I'm also a part of our ASL club. I am currently president. And I am also involved, uh, last year I did a DECA, which is a business and marketing club. So I'm kind of just around and I just like to connect to different people and, you know, different opportunities. Why did you do this whole top 10 thing? Why did you try for this? Um, well, I think ever since I was little, I always kind of strived to be a leader. I wanted to be somebody people looked up to. And I remember going to past Apple Blossom Festivals, and I remember waiting for that royalty flip to go by. And once I saw them, I don't know what happened in little me, but it just, I was just like, Mom, Mom, look it, it's the royalty. And I would just see them with these big sparkly dresses on the big floats. and. I just wanted to be like them, someone who inspired others. So I think as soon as my high school career started, that's when I really started to push myself out of my comfort zone, talking to new people, doing new things, new clubs. And then when uh, Apple Blossom came around, I was so excited to sign up because this gives me the opportunity to hopefully be that inspiration for others. Let's take a check now of your north central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Wednesday was a good one. Once again, no complaints weather wise. We had plenty of blue sky, especially to our friends up north. This is our Billy Goat SkyFi Tower camera up in Okanagan County, and you can see, still see a layer of white up that way. Of course, the Columbia River, here's Pateras and Brewster down that way. Lots of blue skies. We did have clouds here at noon in the Wenatchee Valley, and that kind of burned off throughout our afternoon, enabled us to get up to 46 degrees this afternoon. Boy, it felt good out there after the wind went down around noon. 39 is our normal high for this time of year. Record high 62, second day in a row from 2018. 34 our low this morning, so once again off to a very mild start. 26 is where we should be in our record cold, 5 degrees, and that was set in 1994. Sunrise 717 this morning and sunset is at 513. Let's take a look at what we can expect now as we creep into the end of our work week for Thursday. A little bit cooler temperatures tomorrow. 44 in Moses Lake, 43 for Afreda, and 42 in Quincy. So like every day the past couple of weeks, the Columbia Basin will be our warm spots. 40 in Wenatchee, also Eniad and Chelan. A little cooler for you folks in Omak, Tenasket, Okanagan. You'll be in the upper 30s tomorrow. As we take a look at tonight, we can expect part Partly cloudy skies, area of high pressure over Idaho. That's pretty much clear, keeping our skies cleared out and keeping this large area of low pressure from moving in. Lows in the mid to upper 20s overnight tonight. For Thursday, as we mentioned, mostly sunny, sunny and just slightly cooler tomorrow. We'll see high temperatures in the Wenatchee Valley, generally around that 40 degree mark. For Friday, as this area of low pressure continues to get pushed to the north, Here's high pressure now pushing into our weather picture. It's going to make for light winds on Friday. Partly cloudy sky should be nice with highs in the low 40s. And as we get you into the upcoming weekend, there's not going to be much change. And that's good news, right? It means a nice weekend ahead for us. Partly cloudy. Most of the cloudiness and showers on Saturday will be in western Washington. Again, consistent temperatures into the low 40s. And then our flow really begins to change as we get into Sunday. A very strong westerly flow moving into Washington state. Temperatures will still be seasonal with highs in the low 40s, but I think that will bring us a few more clouds on Sunday. And then by Monday, lots of shower activity embedded in this flow as it moves into Washington. We'll see about a 40% chance for rain in the Wenatchee area. Mild high temperatures though. We're talking temperatures in the mid 40s on Monday. And then by the end of our forecast on Tuesday, high pressure still in place. But notice it's ushering in some cooler northwest 
westerly air. So high temperatures by the end of our forecast back down into the upper 30s. Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast. It's brought to you by Apple Valley Honda. And as we get into tonight, some cooler lows than we've seen the past couple of days, mainly because lots of clear skies overnight tonight. 27 are low, mostly sunny and 40 for Thursday. And boy, look at the stretch from Friday through Sunday. Beautiful weather, partly cloudy both Friday and Saturday. A few more clouds moving in on Sunday as our weather pattern changes just a little bit. 42 for Sunday and then our best chance for rain will be on Monday. Cloudy skies, a 40% chance of the wet stuff, but a little bit warmer. We'll see highs on Monday at 44 and then a northerly flow of air will cool us down just slightly on Tuesday. Mostly sunny then with a high temperature of 39. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Join NCW Life Channel for live coverage of the Apple Blossom Royalty Selection Pageant presented by Cashmere Valley Bank on Saturday, February 11th. The countdown to coronation at 6 and the pageant at 7 o'clock. Coverage is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Harvest Valley Pest Control, and the Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center. Join us for the Apple Blossom Festival Royalty Selection Pageant on the NCW Life Channel. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. The Seattle Kraken showed a lot of rust coming out of the All-Star break with a 4-0 loss at New York last night. The Islanders got off to a good start, and it seems Seattle could not find its footing throughout the NHL contest played at the UBS Center. Here's Jaden Schwartz cutting in, lays it over for Beneers, and Sorokin just got a piece of it. You can see where the Kraken has success. They're quick through the neutral zone. Bull Duke, a shot, he scores! Sam Bolduke's first NHL goal. Martin's pass slowed up. Polak able to step into it. Pass in front. Saved by Jones. Parisi able to dig it out. Popped out for Aho. Sebastian Aho in front. Holmstrom on goal and a save from Jones. Stops it again. This time Parisi one timer. Save made. This line's hacking on a heck of a shift, isn't it? It is. Here's Holmstrom. He scores. It's a beauty. Here's Pelic with a shot. That one knocked down. Pajot on goal and he scores! Probably nice to get it right out of the way, Butch. What was it like for you when you got... Oh, here's Barzell. He scores! Bo Horvath! His first as a New York Islander! Of the Seattle Kraken. Done shot, knocked down, save made! Sorokin a couple of more on Wenberg in time. Not out of the woods yet. Five seconds left, Barzell's the one who was serving the minor, will come out. That one deflected, and Sorokin was able to adjust. Matty Beneers catches up to it. Five seconds left as Boldu comes over and cuts him off. Elias Sorokin, back-to-back -back shutouts with an all-star game in between. The Islanders, 4-0 winners tonight over Seattle. Coach Dave Haxtell says they look like a team with a lot of rust after a week away from the ice. We didn't have any, we didn't sustain any tempo to our game. Um, and, you know, you see that in in a lot of areas, you know, most obvious, you know, for me without, you know, going back and breaking things down and getting too, uh, too over uh, analytical. You know, we didn't track the puck. That breaks us down coming into our zone. There's time, there's space. Um, we're not in spots, and then you know that that leaks into, you know, if, if there's not an opportunity right off of that rush, that leaks into what you do in the D zone as well, where, you know, just too many mistakes that uh, that ended up in direct opportunities against. Jaden Schwartz says Seattle got off to a good start after the puck drop, but just couldn't sustain any kind of energy. I thought we started okay the first few shifts, but um, I think it was pretty evident they're just sort of puck play and structure and um, I thought our energy was just a little bit low um, I thought we just looked a little, a little bit off today a little bit tired and um, you know like I said long, long travel back to Seattle and long travel here so um, you know we don't want to use it too much of an excuse but we know we got a lot better than that and we'll get our energy tomorrow and look at a few things and regroup yeah Ryan Donato says it was pretty evident the guys were suffering from jet lag after taking a week off during the all-star break Obviously, coming off that break, uh, 
it was great, but could give guys time to heal their bodies. But, uh, you know, it, this league is so good, you can't have any sort of 1% off or you're not gonna you're not gonna win, especially against good teams. So I think uh, you know we we definitely were a half a step off tonight, and hopefully a good practice uh, will get us back right into shape. Coach Dave Haxtall says he didn't want to start a five game road trip like this, but thinks it'll be a wake up call for the boys. We looked like we had the effects of you know coming off of a break. Um, you know we could not find a way to give ourselves energy. You know to you know. One goal might have been able to change a little bit of momentum, especially at two nothing. But they, you know, we made two mistakes. You know, give them credit on a four check uh, for the third goal. Um, you know, that's that's a puck that we normally would expect to break out cleanly. We weren't able to do that. Um, you know, the fourth goal, they're more ready. They they jump off of a off of our one face off, create a turnover off of that, and and you know, and find the fourth goal. Uh, so, you know, we just couldn't find the uh, the ability to make a play to get ourselves going in the right direction. <laughs> Apparently, the post-game press conference for Coach Haxtall was in the hallway at the UBS Center. Seattle has the day off today before continuing the road trip in New Jersey tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock game time on Root Sports Northwest. Well, the Wenatchee Wild will try to extend a three-game winning streak on Friday at the Town Toyota Center. Wenatchee steps out of interior division play of the BCHL to face two coastal division teams this weekend. Nanaimo in town on Friday for a 7.05 game, then Coquitlam Saturday at 6.05. Wild leapfrog Vernon into sixth in the interior division standings with a couple of wins last weekend. Wenatchee currently has 41 points on the season, just two back of fifth place Salmon Arm and within four points of Prince George. Well, let's take a look at the Les Schwab Prep Basketball scoreboard from last night. District basketball time, first round for the District 6 1B Girls Tournament. And he had stopped Soap Lake 46 23. Waterville Mansfield clock Cascade Christian 63 15. Paterius whipped Wilson Creek 65 15. That sets up the second round of Moses Lake Christian tomorrow with Paterius facing Waterville Mansfield at 6 30. That's followed by Eniat and Moses Lake Christian at 8 o'clock. Well, the District 6 2B Girls Tournament, uh, Lake Roosevelt better Brewster 46-25 last night, while Okanagan top Tenasket 76-39. That sets up the final round on Friday at Omak High School when Liberty Bell plays Bridgeport for 5th and 6th at 4.30. Brewster battles Tenasket for 3rd and 4th at 6th. Lake Roosevelt and Okanagan will play for the district championship at 7.30. The boys' side of the District 6 2B Tournament resumes tonight in Omak with Okanagan facing Brewster at 6. That's followed by Liberty Bell and Lake Roosevelt at 7.30. Here's the schedule for the District 6 1B Boys' Tournament. Wilson Creek plays tonight at Riverside Christian at 6. Waterville Mansfield faces Soap Lake at Moses Lake Christian at 6.30. Eniad takes on Pateras in Waterville at 7. Thorpe and Moses Lake Christian face off at 8 o'clock. Last night also, first round of the District 5 6 2A Boys' Tournament. Sela stopped Othello 67 55. East Valley down Ellensburg 58 44. Next round Friday, Sela visiting Grandview at 7, while Prosser hosts East Valley. The District 5 6 Girls Tournament for the 2A starts tonight. Sela is at Prosser at 7 o'clock, while Grandview is hosting East Valley. Busy, busy time of year. That's a look at Sports News. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And Eric continues to fill in for Dan Kuntz on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley this week. So let's check back in with him to see what's coming up tomorrow morning. Eric? Coming up on a Thursday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, two more interviews with our top 10 candidates. We'll be joined by Hania Hernandez-Mendoza as well as Finley Otley tomorrow on a Thursday edition of the program as we get ready for Saturday's royalty selection pageant, which starts with our pregame show at 6 with a countdown to coordination and the pageant at 7 o'clock. That's all coming up on a Thursday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Hope to see you tomorrow. Grant? Thank you very much, Eric. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us. Have a great night.
Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up on Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Live channel. Watch Vibrant Living, brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Find out about programs and activities for ages 50 and over, and meet amazing seniors who contribute to our community. New episodes Sundays at 1.30 p.m., replayed throughout the week on the NCW Life Channel.